You have companies that are exposed to various different types of insurance risk, and particularly very large companies, and whether that's workers' compensation or liability or directors and officers coverage, they're going to have an insurance program that manages all of these different coverages. So captives allow companies to have additional flexibility with their risk taking, their risk strategy, and they allow companies to take additional risk for reduced costs. And captive insurance companies are insurance companies. They assume risk, they have to underwrite appropriately for that risk to make a profit, they have to handle claims when they come in, they have to market, they have to do all those things well that insurance companies have to do very well to survive. Well, captives are important because they have a wonderful social function of aligning, as I call it, your pocketbook with better behavior. And that means that captives, and definitionally, the owners and the policyholders are the same or overlap, they understand that they have a direct impact on the finances of how much insurance will cost them the next year. They get very careful, not just about policing their own uh, professional activity, but their colleagues, because who could police, let's say, a medical staff better than the physicians. The way that clients figure out what is the right captive vehicle for them is in consultation with their various professional advisors. They will need to consult a tax attorney, uh, they'll need to consult an a captive manager, uh, they'll need to consult an actuary, and determine what sort of a captive vehicle is the best fit for their risk management needs. The insurance companies who you buy insurance from, they want to make a profit. They want to have overhead expenses. And so typically, you'll have 60 cents on the dollar will go to pay your losses. Most people at hospitals, most people on the boards, realize that you want to take on as much risk as you can because rather than getting paid 60 cents on the dollar for the, the losses, you want to, that to be 90, 95 cents, and a captive is a great way to do that. In thinking about whether to establish a captive insurance company, first thing is to decide whether a captive actually will accomplish the objectives that you're trying to, to deal with. And these would be things like you want to get control of your underwriting profits, you want to get control of your investment earnings, you want to stabilize your premiums over time, you want to make sure you have adequate coverage, both in terms of the limits of coverage and also the quality of the coverage itself. There's a number of different business sectors that are interested in the captive market. The traditional ones are property companies, builders and developers, hospitals, medical groups, others with a medical professional liability risk, which historically has been difficult to insure. Many captives in some industries did, were born because the commercial market either disappeared, was too expensive, or had terms and conditions that were considered unacceptable. A classic example is the American Association of Blood Centers and the emergence of HIV, then basically the commercial market disappeared. So, you know, we look at it as self-help. It's a very entrepreneurial way to get things done. And there's a number of different types of captives and they serve different purposes. There's a single parent captive where a company may form a captive solely for the purpose of providing insurance to itself. There are also uh, industry captives uh, as well as group captives. And those are, tend to be more for smaller companies. They act more to a pool risk, whereas the single parent captives are really just for one company to insure its own risks. There's subspecialties including risk retention group cell captives. A lot of it is driven actually by the regulatory burden, some forms might be better, and how will the captive and its owners be taxed. Currently in the captive world, we're seeing a tremendous amount of growth in the number of choices of where captives can be located. In the United States, there's over 30 so-called captive domiciles to choose from. If we went back just say 10 years ago, we'd have maybe 10 choices. The increase in enhanced attention that the captive industry has now gained due to its scale and scope, I think necessitates having capable advisors in many different fields. And where your actuary comes in is that they help you look at all of those relatively uncertain things and start to put some numbers to it, which then when you're operating a business, you can judge what your liabilities and your obligations are. And when you know what those are, you can be a lot more optimistic on a day-to-day -day basis. Communication is what we pride ourselves on. And by working with captive insurance companies, we're constantly working with people who are not in the insurance field. So we have to be able to explain what we're doing. Often when you're dealing with a captive insurance company, you're dealing with somebody for whom insurance isn't their day job. You know, they run a trucking company, they're a property developer, uh, they're a risk manager in a hospital. 
And so, you know, it's important when working with their advisors uh, that they have the ability to listen, that they trust their opinion. Clients don't care if it's a if it's a casualty risk or if it's a healthcare risk. If they have an actuarial question, they expect Milliman to be able to solve it so that they can focus on their real problems, helping their patients, finding better ways to, to solve patients' problems. We help them with their insurance so they don't have to think about their insurance.